On October 31st, 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto proposed Bitcoin as a decentralized digital currency. Bitcoin uses a public ledger called the blockchain to keep track of every transaction that takes place. Because of this blockchain technology, a central authority is no longer needed to verify transactions. The question then becomes, if Bitcoin was able to decentralize money, what else can we decentralize? Ethereum is a software platform or a network of computers based on blockchain technology, which allows for the creation of decentralized applications, also known as dApps. Whereas Bitcoin allowed for the decentralization of money, Ethereum allows for many other things to be decentralized. Let's take the popular social media apps, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as examples. While millions of users love to use these apps, big tech companies have enormous power to promote the content they want, to suppress content they disapprove of, or to outright ban users they do not agree with. A decentralized social media app would have no such central authority. Another example would be Uber Eats or DoorDash. If you wanted to deliver food to someone, these food delivery services would take out a fee for matching you up with a customer. With a food delivery dApp, you'd be able to make much more money since you would not be paying a large fee to a corporation. But how does all this technology work so smoothly? Every dApp runs on a smart contract. Contracts can be thought of as simply if-then statements. For instance, if I pay a certain amount of money, then I gain ownership to a house. Or if I work a certain amount of hours, then I am entitled to be compensated for a certain amount of money. Smart contracts take care of the outcomes of contracts automatically. Say, for instance, you were planning to stay at a hotel. If you sent your cryptocurrency to the owner, the second he received your payment, the key card to your hotel room would be able to open the door. However, if you did not pay, your key card would not work. The smart contract allows the outcome of the contract to be executed as long as all the ifs are met. Because computer code makes sure the specifics of the contract are met, there is no need for a central authority. Transactions are thus transparent and permanent, as once a contract is set, it must be followed and cannot be changed. If you have been trading for some time or have been reading about crypto, you've probably heard about the term Ether. So what exactly is Ether? All of these dApps on the Ethereum network require lots of computing power, and Ether is used to keep the network running. To create and deploy a dApp, the creator must pay Ether to the network. Just as a car needs gasoline, the network needs Ether to pay for all the computing power that is needed to keep a dApp operational. Simply put, Ether is the cryptocurrency of the Ethereum network, and it's like a digital oil used to keep the network running. Just as you would need oil to run a machine, Ether is needed to keep the network functioning. That is, to pay for all the computing costs. That is why programmers must pay a fee in Ether to publish their dApps on the Ethereum network. Ethereum was first proposed by Vitalik Guterin in 2013 and went live in 2015. Ether's ICO took place in 2014 at around 40 cents. 